everyone. Good evening. Good to see every single of you. Maybe some of you are based in different time zone. There will be good morning and good afternoon to all of you guys. If you can hear my voice loud and clear, can you type good in the chat? All right. Hi, Kelvin. Good to see you here. Good. Perfect. Uh, I can see some of you are still trying to connect. Fantastic. Okay. Good, good. Kelly is here. Esther. Hey, Janice, Cindy, Kim Bing, fantastic. I love to see every single one of you. All right. Wow. I can see that you guys are all ready for market updates. <laughs> How many of you are ready for market updates? If you are, can you type M in the chat? Okay. M stands for market, market update. There we go. We are going to have a lot of fun tonight. And let's dive into the market and really see what exactly is happening to the market and uh, what should we do as an investor to really navigate through this situation very, very, very carefully, right? So that we can make profits in a very, very safe way, right? So in the meantime, later on, I will also introduce you to my special guest, all right? Who is actually has a lot of economy background. So he is none other than someone that you are actually pretty familiar with. And later on, I'm going to introduce him. But before that, okay, let's do some market updates. And um the... I still remember it was about two months ago, right? Two months ago since I did the market update in early June. So while the past two months, I've been traveling to different parts of the China. Uh, I also went to Taiwan to do uh, diving and all this. You know, you know when I was uh, diving in Taiwan, the sea was really calm. It was really clear. But when you log into the stock market at night, okay, <laughs> it was pretty choppy. Okay, guys, how many of you felt that it was quite choppy lately? Okay, there's quite a lot of movement. Okay, if you felt so, can you type C in the chat? Okay, how many of you felt it was the Red Sea? <laughs> can we say it was Red Sea? Can we felt that it was very choppy as well? Red Sea, red, 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 choppy sea, roller coaster, right? Okay, so now if you still remember during my previous market update back in June, back then the market, uh, just look at the S&P 500 at that time, it was $542 uh, as compared to right now. Okay, let's take a look at what happened. But basically at that time, we actually look at different indicators, right? So we look at buffer indicator and at that time, it was actually already pretty high at 188%, right? And at the same time, we also look at the Schiller P-E ratio back then and it was at 35 times, which was also on the high side, right? And and uh, I did give my caution uh, to some of you guys, if you are guys, you, if you guys are here, if you are inside my my own ETF coaching community, I also gave caution that hey guys, you do not want to be fully invested in in that situation right because the market was too high you really want to make sure you uh, start to take profits and have more cash in hand right so at that time anyone still remember what was the cash allocation percentage that uh we we went through that was uh the advice okay anybody remember anybody <laughs> remember anybody remember that was the cash allocation percentage that uh i gave advice on okay which was exactly what I did as well for my own portfolio or because of my email, right? So uh, the, the cash allocation percentage has also changed a little bit since then. So because the market right now, all right, has dropped, right? For the past one month, it dropped about 4% uh, just on the S&P 500 alone. And of course, if you look at those tech companies, obviously they will drop more than the market, right? So if you can see Amazon, it's down like 16%, right? Since the all-time high. And then NVIDIA was down 25% from its all-time high. So if you are invested into uh, these few tech companies, definitely your portfolio is being impacted right now, right? I can totally feel you. And right now, the sentiment of the market was actually extreme fear, right? How many of you felt that it was a little bit scary for you? If this is you, can you type me in the chat? That you felt a little bit scary uh, because of the recent volatility. Now, thanks for being so honest with me, Kelly, Kim Bang, all right? So this is what's happening and it's totally normal because not just you, majority of the market right now is feeling the fear. But once again, just like what Warren Buffett said, right? When everybody is fearful, this is probably the good time to be greedy, right? So 
Let's take a look at uh, some of the opportunities that we have tonight as well. But most importantly, as you can see, not all the stocks are going down, right? So in fact, some of the tech companies, even though they went down, for example, Apple, but it's picking up pretty, pretty quickly, right? It's kind of like rebounding halfway, right? Same as uh, Meta as well. Actually, Meta already like pretty much rebound back to almost its all-time high. So the tricky question is, then is the market back to recover, right? If it's the scary, it's the scary period over, right? That is the most important thing. Now, of course, right? I wish that I can really give you the clear cut answer, whether is it like, oh, the, the bear market or the correction is over and whatnot, right? But once again, right, nobody can really have the crystal ball. So what we want to do is we want to use the different data points to help us to better navigate and give us better confidence and better reference to in terms of how much should we be investing right now and what are the, some of the good uh, ETFs or assets that you should be investing right now, right? So can everybody type C in the chat, right? C stands for confidence, right? So what I'm giving you right now, the market updates to give you more confidence and more guidance to help you to be better in this journey. And once again, right, I could be wrong, right? Like the market could probably go down afterwards. But most importantly is we always do position sizing properly so that we can have the right proper uh, management, right? When it comes to our portfolio, that is the most important thing. Right. So now let's take a look at some of the indicators again, right? Because it has been two months since we did the last market update. So now let's take a look at the first one, which is the Buffett indicator. And if you have been following me, that you know that I always look at Buffett indicator to have a good sense of whether it's a market expensive or cheap right now. Right. So guys, if you look at the chart at 197%, which is uh, the market value, which is a total, let's talk about the US market, divide by its GDP, it's almost like two times, right? So the GDP, it's one, but the market valuation is almost two times. So guys, can you tell me, is this considered uh, overvalue or undervalue? What do you think? O or U, okay? Over or under? Yes, exactly, right? So Kevin said over... Rick say over as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. So this is actually overvalued. And if you think about, about two months ago, right? If you still remember two months ago, it was at 188% when we did the update. Now it actually increased to 197%. So some of you may be thinking, huh, what's going on? I thought that the market drop. How come it become like even more overvalued? Now, it's also because the data, as much as it's very useful, it's also quite lagging. Why? Because if you observe the dates of uh, the last update of this chart, right? even though I screenshot it today, but the last latest update that I can find is actually backdated, backdated to uh, May 31st. So guys, can you tell me <laughs> in May, is any correction yet? Has the correction happened yet? Not yet, right? So recently, actually, the correction happened, which is about three months down the road. So right now, actually, we would not know exactly where is the line, but I suspect actually the line should have a pullback right now. Okay, so this is a slightly outdated chart, but once again, it tells us roughly whether the market is it overvalued or undervalued based on that period of time. That's why we want to look at some other reference point, right? because it doesn't seem to be very accurate right now. So what I did next was I actually want to look at the P-E ratio and the Schiller P-E ratio of the overall market. And if you look at the Schiller P-E ratio, which is a more stringent way of evaluating whether is it uh, overvalued or undervalued compared to P-E ratio, this is slightly more stringent, right? So you can see that the current Schiller P-E ratio has actually come down a little bit. Previously, it was at about I think slightly higher, like 35 or 36, uh, two months ago when we did the update. And today, when I did the screenshot, all right, as you can see, right, 9 of, uh, 9 of August, like just a few days ago, right, just a few days ago, right, it was 34 times. So 
it shows that indeed when the market starts to correct down, the Sheila P ratio will start to drop a little bit, right? So uh, how to reach Sheila P ratio and compare to the P ratio? So usually what happened was if you look at the peak, the peak is usually when Sheila P actually uh, uh, like reach more than 40 or very close to 40. So previously, as you can see here, right? This is back in the 2000 dot com bubble, and this is back in the 2020 uh like correction, right? So that was when the Sheila P ratio actually went really really high, and then after that the 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 bubble start to burst, and then after that right now what we are seeing right now is it's not that high yet, but at the same time it's already on a pretty high side. Now, having said that, it's always good to read the historical pattern, right? Like, oh, if it reach above 40, then you know that the market is very scary. But of course, there are also other times that it doesn't need to reach 40, then the market to st can start to tumble, right? So for example, if you still remember like back here then, this is the 2008, right? It doesn't seem to be like very high, but then uh, because of certain black swan, black swan event, event the, the, the market shock can still happen. So once again, that's why no, no indicator is perfect. You just want to use different reference points so that to help yourself to have a better sense of the market, right? To have a better confidence and understanding of the market, right? So this is the first one that I will look at. In fact, the second one, the first one is buffer indicator. This is the second one. Now, the third one that I want to look at is also the current P ratio, right? Which is less stringent, but... This is what most fund managers, professional investors, they themselves are looking at as well. If you are looking at what they're looking at, roughly you can have a good sense of what is the market generally is like, at least the anticipation of the market, right? So as you can see right now, right, it looks better because it's at 27 times, right? It's not that crazy high, like above 30 something, right? So at 27 times, I felt that the market seems to be quite okay. Obviously, it's not very cheap, but I wouldn't say that it's very expensive either, right? So this is the third indicator that uh, we can look at. How many of you guys are following me? Okay, if you are following me, can you type three in the chat, right? So we have looked at three indicators to get us a better sense of the market right now and let's go on further right so that we have more evidence and in the end we will come to a conclusion together right so now the next indicator that we can look at is obviously right what exactly is Buffett doing right because we all know that Buffett is the best best and the most famous investor on earth right and he has compounded his wealth for himself for his shareholder right at 20 percent year on year for so many years he is definitely a legend so that's why we want to look at his action and use it as a reference as well right and some of you have been following Buffett and you know that recently Indeed, all right, he has actually sold quite a lot of shares. Um, and he actually half of its stake, right? Half of his stake in Apple. So it was actually quite shocking, maybe to many people that, oh wow, how comes Buffett finally sells uh, sell away so many shares, right? Especially uh one of his all-time favorite Apple, right? And then uh he also sold away uh, Bank of America. Uh, quite a lot of shares in bank BAC as well. He's a uh, second largest holding right now, become the third largest holding because after he sold the way, uh, BAC becomes his third position, right? And he also bought into quite a lot of um treasury bills, which are short term treasury bills to give him those fixed and uh generally lesser volatile I, I think it's actually very little risk right because when you're buying a uh, treasury bills from the government right they are unlikely to default then then you're gonna be very safe right so that's what he is doing so now the thing is what buffer is doing right now you can see that uh based on his latest uh ch chart that i can find online the equity and cash and equivalent percentage has actually changed quite a lot, right? Since we did the last update, right? So previously, Buffett's cash holding was at about 26 to 7%, all right? 26 to 27%. And right now, after he sold away quite a lot of his uh, stocks, right? And because of that, the cash percentage 
suddenly jumped to almost like reaching 50%. And then at the same time, the equity security, which is the his portfolio in equity, right? Previously, it was at about 60 something percent, right? At, if I'm not wrong, it's about 63%, right? And right now it has reduced to almost 50%. So what does that mean is right now, it seems that Buffett is almost like 50-50, right? So can everybody type 50-50 in the chat? That means 50% in uh, cash and then 50% in his equity portfolio. Now, having said that, of course, Buffett also has a lot of his private companies that is still generating a lot of uh, income and a lot of cash flow for him that is not counted inside here. This is just the equity side, which is the publicly traded companies that he owns, right? It's about 50-50. So now the thing is, right? Buffett has been selling quite a lot of uh, stocks, right? Including apples as well. But that doesn't stop him from buying certain company as well. So Anyone can make a guess what is the company that he actually added lately? What is the company that he actually added lately? Make a guess. Ah, okay. Chop. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Fantastic. One of you get the answer that I was looking for, right? Why when said that he actually bought back Berkshire Hathaway, exactly. He actually bought back his own company shares. And in fact, right, for the past six years, Berkshire Hathaway has spent almost $78 billion to buy back its shares. So recently, latest, the latest share buyback was $345 million. Now, of course, this amount is not huge as compared to the amount that he sold, right? Uh, Apple stocks and all this. But still, it gives you a good sense that Warren Buffett in himself sees that his company is undervalued, right? And he also sees the future, um, future growth and the future protection that the company has to offer, right? And that's why he actually uses company's money to buy back his company shares, right? And you also know that Warren Buffett, he only buy back shares when it's undervalued. He doesn't buy back shares like any other company. Most of the companies out there, they like to buy back shares just for the sake of buying back shares, right? So that they can reduce the, the share counts and then increasing the EPS to manipulate the EPS. That's not what Warren Buffett likes to do, right? He only likes to buy back his own shares when it's undervalued. So from his integrity and from his character, then you know that, oh, wow, actually right now, it could be a good potential, good opportunity to look into Berkshire Hathaway if you have not uh, bought it, or maybe it's also a good come a good time to look into adding more positions into Berkshire Hathaway as well. So now, of course, the most important thing is then how much did he buy back, right? If you can get it at similar price or even cheaper price than what he bought back, then. Fantastic, right? Yeah, you're buying it cheaper than Warren Buffett. So that's why when you dig into the latest quarterly earnings, right, you will be able to find this number, right? So I already, already done the work for you so you don't have to do it. But basically, you can see that he bought back, right, his company share A, right, class A shares in both April and May, which was just a few months ago, right? Very recently, and... What is the amount, the share, the, the amount of like, like the share price that he bought back at that time, right? It was because class A was the original stock, right? So that's why the, 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 the number that you're seeing right now is the most expensive stock on earth. Right? So what you're seeing right now is like, huh? $620,000 for one share. Yes. It's $620,000 for one share, right? But you can roughly see that right now, right? With $620,000 to his latest purchase price was $626,000. So now let's make a comparison to what is Berkshire A uh, today, right? So Berkshire A today is $647,000. 
So I would say that it's not a lot of difference because they only increase like, oh my gosh, there's a bug in my room. Okay, I hope it, it, it will go out. Okay, so it only increased like 20K, right? But 20K out of what, 600K, it's a small percentage, right? So that's why I would say that, um, well, this could be a very, very good time for you to look into buying Berkshire Hathaway. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, ah, but Chloe, how am I able to like have a 600K, right? To just buy one single share. So guys, can you tell me what is the uh, alternative to Berkshire Hathaway Class A share? Exactly. Very good. All right. That is your Class B share, right? So if you don't want to buy your Class A share, you can always buy your Class B, which is a lot more reasonable and a lot more affordable to normal people, right? Normal investors like you and me. So this could be a good time for you to look into class B shares as well, start accumulating. And it's a very, very strong company, very diversified um, in the, for long-term investment, right? Especially you are having Buffett to work for you every single day passionately okay, for you because you just love investing. And then at the same time for myself, I've been sharing to my own close community about my ETF coaching community that I am buying. Okay, right now, uh, the bug is getting very close to me, so I have some reaction. But once again, coming back here, it's uh, I actually informed my community saying that hey, I bought some ETF because once again, right, right now when the market is being very volatile, if you are unsure about exactly what are the individual stocks to pick up, right, because you do need to read a lot deeper into the annual reports, earnings and all this, and you might not have the interest to read them. Or maybe you could be wrong reading them as well, right? So that's why if you don't want to have all those hassles or those troubles picking the wrong stocks, the best way is actually do ETF investing, right? So this is what I do. I ask my community, say, hey, you know, these are some of the ETFs that I personally bought recently during the drawdown. And in fact, okay, these two ETF that I bought have started to increase in price as actually starts to regain back. So once again, it's very important that um, use the market volatility to your advantage, right? See it as a chance for you to buy more or at least giving you a chance to buy it cheaper, right? So that you can always do dollar cost averaging into great companies or great ETF, um, so that you can build up your wealth in the long run, right? So uh, have more confidence in yourself and have more confidence uh, in the market, right? Uh, because there's always, you know, like market crisis happens every single year and whatnot or every quarter. But if you just keep on buying during that period of time, you will definitely be paid off very well, right? In the long run, right? So can everybody type journey in the chat, right? It's a journey and just keep going, you're going to have amazing time ahead as long as you just keep on buying great businesses at a good price, buying great ETF at a good price, you'll be fine, right? So very, very good, Odie, Irene, I love that, right? So your market, <laughs> US market is always positive to, to you. Fantastic, Calvin, love that, right? So now moving forward, the most important thing is then what do you think or what do we think the market is going to move towards? So this is where, right, I think it's also very important to actually not just look at the few indicators that we just look at, but also look at the macro economy, right? Because at the end of the day, the market is also a reflection of the economy, right? Very often, more often than not, it's a leading, leading indicator than the economy, right? So what we want to see is... um the Fed's decision because they do affect the overall market as well. And for myself, I'm not the best person because I do not study deep into the macro economy, what is the interest rate and all this. And that's why I want to bring in my special guest who has actually every single day, right? His work just deals with this, right? So he really need to read all those economies data. He need to analyze the interest rate. And he also needs to use this interest rate to his advantage to help his clients as well, right? So this will definitely give you a better sense of where is the market heading based on the interest rate moving. And most importantly, uh, giving you an, another knowledge in terms of how you can actually use all those knowledge to your advantage as an investor as well, right? So without further ado, Let's welcome our Mr. Ethan 
from Unbeatable Mortgage. Okay, how many of you have seen Ethan before? If you have seen Ethan before, can you type E in the chat, right? E stands for Ethan. And he is back in action again because Chloe is back in action. <laughs> Hi, Ethan. Thanks for Hello. coming here. Thank you for having me once again. Appreciate being here. How have you been? How's everything? All okay? Fantastic. I've been enjoying too much. <laughs> For the, Hello, I have to back back in action. <laughs> okay, man. Yeah. <laughs> e Ethan is everywhere. Well, I, I think I think you have you have been traveling also. That's why Irene also said you've been everywhere. <laughs> I think I think like this. Yeah, all right. Okay, so Ethan, are you able to share with us what is your insights into the market? What um the recent FOMC meeting? What did the Fed say? Where do you think the future's uh interest rate is gonna go, and how would that impact? Definitely. Okay. So um, the the thing is, FOMC did uh. Let me let me share my slides over here. Can you guys see this? Yes. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So uh, a few things like like um, the FOMC just dropped. Uh, currently is not very eventful, but the more important thing is that what happened after the FOMC, which then gives us foresight for the next one. All right, so let um, Chloe, thank you for your great introduction, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, so what I do, right, I'm the economist for Unbeatable Mortgage. My job is to help all my clients uh, save as much money based on their interest rates. I work with 10 banks to be able to get them the best ones. Then uh, eventually, that's how I help people save as much money as possible. Uh, and we'll talk about that later. But more importantly today, let's focus on the FOMC update. This is the one that was out in June, okay? The one out in June, right, uh, is the latest one we have. I know the one that we saw recently in the 31st um, July, right? That is uh, the news that came out recently. And the news is that they are going to follow this particular trend of uh, the federal funds rate, okay? Mm -hmm. So everybody, uh, today, let's uh, explain to you what the Federal Reserve do. They, they have two jobs. Job number one is to make sure that maximum employment. Next is stable prices. Okay. So I want you guys to remember these numbers. Uh, two, my apologies are uh, a little bit uh, messy. But you can see this number. This is 2.6 and this is 4.0. This is very important for the data that I'm about to present soon. Okay. The PCE, they intend for 2024 to end at 2.6. And the unemployment rate, they intend for it to end at 4.0. So okay. they have one lever, correct, Chloe? So they have one lever, which is the federal funds rate. They push up the federal funds rate to lower inflation and they lower it to increase unemployment. So this is what happens, all right? Mm -hmm. So the latest data is this. Okay, this is the key takeaway from the latest FOMC. Number one, they have decided to hold the interest rates at 5.33%. Okay, they have decided to hold the interest rate at 5.33% and they talked about lowering interest rate, which is why you can see a lot of uh, reaction in the market. A lot of people, they expect the, the cuts to come in this time, but it didn't. Mm. They, they have the, talk, the, the word that Jerome Powell specifically used is that they could be looking at cutting rates in September. The word is could. Okay. The PCE is steadily coming down. The, the, the month before that, right? Mm -hmm. If you guys are like me, a little bit nerdy, a little bit um, spend too much time listening to Jerome Powell, you all will hear one of the things that he say, right? Is that the PCE, excluding food and energy, they are expecting 2.7, 2.6. And today, it has showed two rounds of 2.6. Mm. This is in the Q&A. A lot of people will have missed this because everybody after the main uh, conversation had enough of Jerome Powell. <laughs> Me, I am his number one fan. I listen to the Q&A also. <laughs> okay. So you can see that this is coming down. But as you can see over here, I said unemployment was healthy. Unemployment was healthy. Okay. This came in July 2024. This happened two days after the FOMC. This is when the unemployment rate shot up from 4.1 mm. to 4.3. All 
okay? This is when we had a, that's why you can see, all of you can see the, 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 the stock market was bloody, mm -hmm. all right? For all of you that, uh, I hope that you guys had a position. I, I certainly did. Um, and at this position, at this point of time, the unemployment rate has risen to 4.3. And if you look at the previous projection, everybody, can you please type down what, they, what we aimed for unemployment at the end of 2024? Right, we aim for 4.0, and today is already 4.3. So, okay, so what I think is there are one of two things that can happen, correct? Rick Go, Rick Co, wonderful 4.0. All right, in fact, next year's 4.2, it is already higher than that already. Yeah, yeah. So, remember, once again, they have two jobs job number one, maximum employment, number two, stable prices. So because of this, I believe that the federal funds rate are looking to lower. All right. And mm -hmm. because of that, later I got my projections about where Singapore interest rates are going to go. <laughs> but Chloe, today, please share what you what you feel about the data that I shared. What do you what do you feel? About? I think if eventually when they are going to lower the rates, mm. it's definitely a good news for company because borrowing becomes cheaper there will be better liquidity into the market. Correct. And when better liquidity comes, what happens to prices? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we right. shall not do prediction. <laughs> we shall not do predictions. We are not fortune tellers. Yeah. So I think, I, I think that's why at the end of the day, it's always good to just have the long-term investing mindset right because you have the long-term investing mindset um and if you keep on just buying great companies or great etf that's how your wealth is going to appreciate in the long run right so so i i think that's what eden does as well so that's why okay before eden come back to share about the singapore market situations as well what's going to happen to singapore interest rate especially for those who have uh uh, investment tied to Singapore market, I think that would be very crucial, right? So let me just really have a good conclusion of what am I personally doing and what I think you can consider doing as well. But once again, there's no, uh, like it's not a one size fit all kind of thing. So make sure you don't take it as an investment advice, but always make sure you do your due diligence, okay? Can everybody type D in the chat, right? D stands for due diligence, huh? you need to do your due diligence when it comes to your investing portfolio as well, okay? Love that, love that, right? So what should we be doing moving forward? So in my opinion, I felt that, once again, going back to the timeless wisdom that Buffett has shared, that he has again and again say that don't try to time the market, right? Because nobody can truly predict the market. So even he himself right now, as much as he felt that the market is not undervalued, and he actually also sold quite a lot of positions as well, but he is also not timing the market. He just felt that right now he wants to raise more cash and uh, at the same time still have 50% invested. So if he's trying to time the market, then well, uh, he will be like exiting, the, exiting all the positions, right? But apparently he didn't. And he still has a lot of his uh, net worth and Berkshire Hathaway's money invested in the market. So what I would suggest is, all right, if you are looking into balancing your portfolio, can use it as a reference, like 50-50, okay? So once again, 50-50 in the chat, right? Put it as 50% invested and 50% cash, right? So for myself, I am not, I'm not having so much cash because recently, uh, due to the market drop, I actually added more positions into the market. So for myself, I think I'm more like a 60, 40 or like, for a 65, 35 kind of range, right? So I'm just showing, sharing with you what I'm personally doing. And I'm also showing with you what Buffett, he himself is currently doing so that you can have a good sensing of what you can be doing as well, all right, in this situation. And then secondly, I felt that if you have no idea exactly what to invest, then always go with something that is really, really safe, right? That you know that it just cannot go wrong, right? Especially for long-term investing. So one of them is definitely Berkshire Hathaway and you can look at what Buffett has been doing. He actually bought back shares in the recent few months and the amount that he bought, 
right? It's pretty close to the share price that you are seeing right now. So what you are, you are if you are getting it right now, it's just a slight, slightly more expensive than what Buffett buy. I think it's okay, right? Especially if you're looking at long-term investing, right? And then obviously there are also solid ETF that you can consider adding. If you're not sure what to add, then just get the most basic one, which is the S&P 500, right? What Buffett has been advocating right normal retail investors to do is actually just to own S&P 500 that is definitely one of the great advice that you can listen to and then of course if you are inside my ETF community I keep on sharing what other some of the ETFs that I am looking at I'm personally buying as well then you can also use it as a reference right so that is for the buying opportunity now on top of that I also felt that as an investor we should not just have everything into one basket right? It's always about learning to diversify and learning to having different kind of asset classes inside your portfolio so that it's balanced, right? That you just don't need to worry that, oh my God, if the US market go down, then my entire network is going to go down. That would be very scary, right? <laughs> right? So that's why I felt that it's always good to just have a balance, right? If you can have some money inside in the stock market, have some money inside the property market, or maybe have some money inside other asset class, then as long as the code that and I don't think they are like as long as they're not like super code related, then you are fine, right? You are just withstanding the entire uh market condition on its own, right? With a balanced portfolio, right? So for myself, I invested in a condo, and thank you so much, Stefan. Yes, that is Normanton. Yes, that's right. Okay, so uh Normanton Park, I bought it. Was it like Eden? How many years ago? I forgot already. I think three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. And then, uh, it, yeah, and Ethan was the one who uh, helped me to refinance. Uh, for those who don't know what about, about my Momentum Park story, it was very interesting because when you buy a new project, right? Momentum Park was a new project. Uh, at first, when I bought it, I was so happy. Wow, the rates were so low, guys. Do you know that I bought it? I think back in 2021. Yeah end of 2021 and at that time nothing about the interest rate there's no indication that the interest rate is going to increase right so i happily went to buy the project and and then it was at like zero point my my interest rate was like what zero point five percent or about that less than that so at first uh with the development not finished yet i'm just paying a little bit like a pocket money every single month uh, to to have this project, I was like, oh, fantastic! But then things happen, right? When the the Fed start to raise interest rate, and then when I start to collect my house, I need to like start to pay the full amount, right? I was actually in shock because even though the condo was not very huge, uh, it's a one million dollar property, but my monthly mortgage was already four thousand dollars. Because the interest rate at that time was so high, was like, and it was a floating interest rate. I couldn't fix it, right? Because it was a new project. So I couldn't fix it. So the moment I collect my house, I was like, what? I need to fork out like 4K every single month. And as much as I do invest, I also feel that oh, it's draining a lot of my cash. It's, it's draining a lot of my cash and I didn't want that, right? So after that, right, the thing is, I did manage to rent out my condo, but despite renting it out and I collect back like $3,800 of uh, monthly rental, I was still negative, right? Because my mortgage was already 4K, my maintenance fee was 250 my property tax was $300. So in the end, my cash flow was still negative. It was negative $750, right? So I keep on thinking, oh my God, how am I going to solve this situation? Because a lot of people told me, oh, when you buy a property, you're going to have positive cash flow income. Uh, cash flow income. That's why I got interested into buying property in the first place. But until I experienced it myself, I was like, that is not true. How come I'm negative when some people, someone else can tell me that it's positive, right? So until I met my good friend, Ethan, okay? So, <laughs> so my, after, after I asked Ethan, hey, Ethan, are you able to just help me to see what can I do with my mortgage so that I can have positive cash flow situation? This is what happened, right? So he basically helped me to refinance my entire mortgage and I lower it down my installment if you still remember, originally it was more than $4,000 per month. And right now I'm only paying like 2.3, right? 2.3K per month. So if you put that back into perspective, right? My rental is still the same, 3,008, right? 
but because my mortgage shrunk to 2003, so despite all those maintenance fees and property tax I have to pay, right, I become net net positive. Positive $900 in terms of cash flow. Guys, I want to ask you guys this, right? How many of you don't mind uh, having extra $900? $900 every single month, right? If you if you don't mind, right, type me in the chat, right? So can go Bangkok, right? You can have a like a free air flight to go Bangkok and then you can stay there for a few days and come back, right? That's your monthly positive cash flow, right? And and I keep on thinking about it. Actually, it's just not more than, it's actually more than 900 because from negative 750 to positive $900, my change in terms of cash flow is actually 1650 Right. So that's why I was really, really happy and very grateful to Ethan. And that's when I started to invite him to come and share. Hey, 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 Ethan, are you able to come and share with my followers, my audience, like exactly how they can do that too, right? If you guys are looking into refinancing and all this, what can he do for you guys? Right. That's why I start to invite him to do market updates and because he's so good at looking at the interest rate and the macroeconomy and everything. So without further ado, I want to pass the time back to Ethan and ask him, right, like exactly where do you think is the interest rate heading forward for Singapore market, especially if the US market decides to, you know, lower the rates? Ethan, suddenly I cannot hear you for some reason. Oh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I've got a little bit of slides to, for us to be able to see. And uh, I will definitely talk about where interest rates are going to go in uh, Singapore. And one thing is actually Chloe saved a lot more because in your monthly installment, there is interest and there is principal. What happens over time? What I always tell my customers is that paying your mortgage is the most boring way to become a millionaire because if you own a million dollar property and you finish paying, Tada, you're a millionaire. And in between, you still get rentals. So that's quite a lot. Um, for mortgage, this is a home loan and can you can borrow up to 75% of the value. And it's the only loan that can be paid back using CPFOA, which is why the rates are so sexy. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about rates. All right, in... In the whole overall scheme of things, I can uh, there are a strategy, there is a structure, but today let's focus on the interest rates and how I can uh, try to help you guys save money. At this point of time, if you're looking between fixed rates and floating rates, we say $1 million, okay? Rough example. Using the fixed rate versus the floating rate, the floating rate is three months or rough, which is the one over here. Let me just color this. Over here at the bottom right, are you able to see 3.61 plus yeah. 0 0.4, which brings us to this number over here, 4.01 versus 2.83. Okay, so in between these two, if you choose the correct rates, uh, you'll be saving quite a lot of money as we can see over here. A new interest rate 2.83 is the fixed rate, is it? Yes, the fixed rate. So right now, this is the rates people are able to choose in the market, whether to take 4.01 or to take the fixed rate of 2.83. Um, and then the price difference is 23000 So how many of you will pick 2.83 and how many of you will pick 4.01? And keep in mind, everybody, today, they are talking about cutting interest rates. Okay, so if anybody want to choose fixed question. question. Ah, anybody, uh, this one, we try to change. Uh, if anybody want to choose fixed rate, put type down 2.83. Anyone want to choose floating rate, type down 4.01. Okay, we'll wait for the reply to come in a little bit. But this is what I do for my clients. Okay, Kelvin, choose floating interest rate. Okay, 4.01. Okay, Chloe, 2.83, wonderful. <laughs> floating rate, Rick Go from Rick Cole, for floating rate. All right, excellent. And we will now see. But before that, we are about to go into certain, certain things that um, are a bit more sensitive. Lah. Okay, in this place, uh, this is quite a public domain and um, everybody over here do not jaywalk we do not um, 
we do not uh do anything illegal we do not we do not do any of these kind of things and uh, these are all forward looking statements that may or may not be true but these are some f- historical facts that i want to share with you first things first singapore do not control domestic interest rates they do not okay so mas gives us dom- control over domestic interest rates and domestic interest rates have typically been below us interest rates this is interesting this is within the mas doctrine however data talk and bs walk okay so <laughs> over here we see that there is a 94.47% correlation over the last 19 years okay past performances are not indicative of future results but 49.47% is 49.47%. Okay. And what happens is every single month, they will, um, every single uh, FOMC, they will then put up a dot plot to then decide where the interest rates are going to go, which just now I showed you. And the current, the current effective federal funds rate is 5.33. It's going to go to 5.1. And then 4.1 and 3.1. The slide is, give me a moment. Let me bring you to the slide. Um, ah, Okay, so this is the slide that goes to 5.1, 4.1, and 3 over here. Okay. Oh. And then I bring you to my drawing over here. Okay, so the 5.1, 4.1, 3.1 is what I use for my projections for Sora. At this point of time, we have 63% confidence because um, we cannot trust the government 100%. I love Singapore government, but I believe in them 90%. The US side, there are a lot more data that can change. Therefore, 70. So 70 times 90, you get about 60 plus. Okay. So what we can see over here is that by the end of this year, we are expecting Sora to drop from 3.65 to 3.49. At the end of next year, we are seeing it to drop to 2.81 from today. So 2025 December is about one year plus from today. One year uh, year plus, uh, close to two years from today. And over that, right, you take 2.81, plus 0.4, that is still going to get us 3.21. So this is the floating rate in 2025 December. Mm. So this is going to be one year and three months. Eh, One year and August. Oh, sorry. Four months. Four months, one year, thank you. One year and four months later. So after that, it's going to slowly drop to 2.1, 2. 2.2, 2. Eh, 2.12. Then if you add 0. 0.4 to 2. this. 2.5. Yes, correct. But the thing is, it's going to drop slowly. Yeah. You imagine taking profit for year one and year 1.5 over here. Yeah. Mm. Correct. So the answer for this at the end of the day, it is floating or fixed. At this point of time, it is very close, but I am still leaning towards fixed at this point of time. Mm. Mm. Yeah, okay. makes sense. Especially given that you see the behavior of the US government, like they've been saying that I'm going to cut rates, I'm going to cut rates, and then until now, they're still not cutting rates, right? So so I when I see, I, when I see, see how they raise rates and they are they're quite assertive in raising rates but when it comes to cutting rates they are very conservative so I felt that it's actually safer to assume that they're not going to cut so fast (laughs) correct correct so so the conclusion is you still lean more towards fixing at 2.83 like for example correct Correct. Definitely. I think the 2.83 is going to be a little bit more advantageous. Um, and the thing, so it's good to get, okay. So the 2.83 uh, is a little bit more advantageous because we don't know what's going to happen for the Federal Reserve. And in the outcome that he follow the what he says he's going to do, the, bet, the, the, 
more money saving option will be still getting the fixed rate rather than the floating rate. Hmm. Okay, Rick Cole says, so it's good to get a fixed rate for the next two years then go for floating. Rick, at this point of time, likely based on the data. However, we are not able to give you any financial advice. Uh, at this point of time, it is likely. We do not know what will happen in the market over the next two years, but based on what we see, then would it be better to be at like fixed for like let's say one year and mm. then go for floating afterwards? Would it be better that way? For your case back then, the package not bad. Uh -huh. Currently, the package not good. Ah, uh, like how? <laughs> Don't have one year fix, is it? Don't have the one year fix, the one long gone already. Uh the other rate that they give, right, is they give you fix for two year with a one year ability to reprice. Hmm. However, um, that one the interest rate slightly higher. Mm. Ah, mm. Okay. I see. Uh, now normally it's two years package. Correct. Every normally it's two years package. Because for myself, I personally also need to refinance again, like correct. end of this year, right? Because I did that last year and. Yours is probably repriced, but I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> okay, Ken. <laughs> mm. All right. So, so uh, there is repricing, there is uh refinancing, and the thing is, my company is very okay with recommending either one. Although uh, repricing, we don't get paid. In fact, I will tell you to probably go towards your bank and do it yourself. But more importantly, I'm able to at least help you guide you in choosing the right type of interest rate and helping you save a few bucks. Uh. Hmm. So uh, any, uh, anyone right now actually in the process of actually wanting to refinance or looking into a property to purchase a property right now, if this is you, type me in the chat. Anyone in the process? Sometimes back then, like when I, when, when actually sometimes I felt that this is also a good conversation to have like me possibly, okay, for example, Rick, right? So to really just get advice first to see what is the best solution so that you are more prepared and you have the best options when you need to take that decision. Yeah, so, and, and they help to unlock more cash flow if done uh, right, the right way. And just like how Ethan helped me to unlock more cash flow also. Yeah, right. so, uh, okay. So right now, okay, I'm just going to quickly share with you guys, right? For those who actually want to look into getting Ethan and his team to help you guys to either uh, reprice or refinance, but actually most importantly is to look into a current situation, what is the better way to do it? Um, yeah, you can just all you need to do is scan this QR code and answer some of the questions, including like when is the best time for Ethan, they all to give you a call. And most of the time, they what they usually like to do is during the call, find out about your situation first, right? Because without understanding about your situation, then wouldn't know. Oh, but I think they're also very curious. Okay, Ethan, uh, do, how, how much do you charge for these services, you know, uh, consultation and all this? <laughs> for your community, no charge at all. Zero. So zero. Zero, everybody. So the thing is, we do we do have a uh, more specialized consultations. For example, fixing people's credit from GG uh, all the way until GG all the way until uh BB and then eventually getting them their loan. And we do charge for that service, but for this community, totally free. Okay. Wow. Wow. So if you need additional services that it's not even inside the slides right now, which is mortgage, right? If you have additional that it's related to your whatever things that Ethan share with you, right? You can just contact him and then he will be, uh, be able to assist you on that as well, right? So I know Ethan, he himself uh, generally always give very, very detailed advice and tailored personal advice to everyone, including his team members, right? His team members also does that. So yes. I, I still remember the first time I jumped on a call with him, Ethan was like, because I was I was on a phone call and I, I can I can hear that you happily typing, ah, let me do the calculation for you. Then his keyboard is so loud, like pop, 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 pop. Then, then after that, I pop a few pop, 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 and say, ah, Chloe, actually your situation is very simple. <laughs> he explained to me as if, as if he is like having a lot of fun like playing computer game. I'm like. <laughs> like Sudoku a little bit. <laughs> yeah, correct. So, 
<laughs> and and what I really enjoy working with Ethan the most is he really enjoy crunching all those numbers. Like he really find joy in doing that. And he said that all those numbers are very sexy. So that's why <laughs> I think it's always good to, to, to work with someone that is really passionate about what he does, right? And then he's able to give you better advice on how you can improve your, your mortgage situation and unlock more cash flow on top of that. Yeah. So in the meantime, all right, do we have any questions from the crowd? Okay, must flood him with Q&A. Ha, ha, ha. Lie, yeah. lie, lie. Please do. Please come, do. Come, come, flood him come, with Q&A. Come, come. If you have any questions regarding the interest rate or maybe your personal situation, if you don't mind sharing a little bit, then uh, we can uh, get Ethan to help you on the spot. So yeah, man, you want volunteer? Let's go. <laughs> and in the meantime, uh, Bino saying that he's from Malaysia. Sadly, mm -hmm. you cannot help. Currently, you are still only helping people who are in, in Singapore, right? Yes, unfortunately, not in Malaysia yet. Uh, but if you want to buy Singapore, you give me a call, maybe I can help. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, Kelvin is saying that right now, property very bullish rate. Right. So, meantime, right, share a little bit Oh, Marcus, less than 300k. Okay, so Marcus says his is less than $300,000, which is a range where people may or may not want to um, refinance you anymore. But it depends, Marcus, is yours a private property or is yours a HDB? Because the advice I would give for these two is very different. Um, and while I have a little bit of time, Dino's, uh, since he's from Malaysia, let me share with you guys a little bit about um, structure, yeah? Okay? So, there, there is a way for Malaysians, as in Singapore PRs, to be able to buy a Singapore property without additional buyer stamp duty. Wait, wait, wait. Can you say again, <laughs> again, again? <laughs> I have a way for Malaysian to own the property 100% without paying additional buyer stamp duty if they have Singaporean spouse. Oh. But once again, this kind of things very, very... Um, I don't want to share too much cheat code. Otherwise, uh, we don't know when it will be patched. But there are a lot of um, different rules from different banks that we are able to then use for our clients, then use for uh, our structure, then use for our uh, recommendation. And this is all usually quite personalized advice. And if I were to give this kind of advice, I will either lose my business or um, <laughs> I will, if I give this advice too freely, I will lose my business because people will then just patch. If you tell the game master something is broken, something is exploitable, they will then patch. That's so, true. That's why when we have a, all of these um, recommendations, usually it's more personalized. Usually it's one-to-one -one questions such as, hey, uh, are you intending to get married? Hey, are you intending to um, sell your house? And all of these kind of uh, questions that eventually make up your strategy will be what I will be playing Sudoku with. Uh, eventually I'll be able to get some uh, idea of what you intend to do and help you get it done. So that's why I do. All right. So so for those who actually want to have this personalized one-to-one -one, uh, consultation with Ethan and the team, and they are definitely not charging you any single cent. In fact, how they uh so Ethan, how how are you going to make uh, uh uh money out of this, right? How are you going to sustain your business? Okay, so um the banks usually pay a referral fee to a person to anybody that brings you to them, actually. So um, what I do is I bring you to my banks. They pay me a lot lesser than the bankers. Don't get me wrong. But that way, right, by taking a haircut on my own pay and getting 10 companies, you guys will come out on top. You guys will get better rates rather than me working for one bank and only able to advertise those rates. One, yeah. one, funny, one funny story is got one person, remember, uh, got one person offended Nine banks, ah, uh. huh? One person offended nine banks, default nine banks. Oh, but don't worry, I got ten. I managed to get him the loan. <laughs> oh so, my gosh! 
there's a lot of different cool and epic things that I get to do on a daily basis, which really helps people. Like Kelvin, you say drama, but when I help people, I feel like superstar. So I okay. <laughs> uh-huh i see oh uh, yeah that's true that's true so so drama so but that's why if you have drama issue well go and talk to ethan and his team they are able to uh de-dramatize for you <laughs> and make your life more colorful because right now it's uh, less drama <laughs> okay and awesome. in the meantime i think like what ethan was saying that because they are not just working exclusively with a bank, right? Uh, or yeah. a bank. And that's mm -hmm. why they're able to com uh, compare different prices uh, from different banks to give you the best solution. And that's what Ethan does for me as well back then, right? There are actually different plans that I can choose from. So he gave me what is the best solution for myself. And in the end, I went with the one that he recommended uh, the most like, during that period of time. So different times have different package and definitely Ethan and his team is able to work with you and help you to find the best package for you as well, right? So if you have uh, any questions, just check with them. All you need to do is to click on the link that I just share inside the chat, all right? And then you are able to go to this Google form. Let me just put it on more time. So when you go to this Google form, uh, all you need to do is to fill up your email, your name, your contact number, and do let them know what do you need help with, right? Are you applying a new loan, refinancing, repricing, or any other uh, difficult situation that maybe you do not want to share right now, but you can put it in a form, okay? And then uh, let them know what is the preferred time that you want to have a call. And mm -hmm. I think the call is usually Zoom call or like a phone call. WhatsApp will be good. WhatsApp will be good. Yeah. yeah. So that's what Ethan and I did as well. So through the WhatsApp call, I can hear him ta -ta 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 -ta, doing all the calculation for me on the spot. Like, wow, okay, that's amazing. <laughs> then, yeah. So all you need to do after that is uh, Ethan and his team will actually get in touch with you. Okay. So uh, in the meantime, uh, Rick is asking any stock tips to provide with regards to individual stock. What would be a good uh, to go in currently? Hey, Rick, I thought you'd be the entire session you are here, right? You didn't hear what was I saying, right? I, I did give you the stock that I am personally looking at also. <laughs> and of course, if you are inside my community, I will definitely be able to share with you more, right? Especially on the ETF side because my community is more on ETF investing as well. Yalla, exactly, okay? So I, I cannot give too many stock tips, right? Because at the end of the day, it's really boils down to your own understanding. So I just want to share with you something that I'm more confident in that I have a lot of uh, conviction in and these two are my choices but once again please do your due diligence it's not a stock recommendations okay very good huh? now okay any other additional questions that you guys might have any other additional questions feel free to ask Ethan right now since he's here all right and in the meantime, okay, just want to share with you guys as well, okay, for those who have already applied for Eden's consultation, they will usually get in touch with you within the next, I think, one to two days, right? Mm -hmm. WhatsApp, drop you a WhatsApp and all this. Yeah, some of you very happy and very excited because market open already. <laughs> How's the market today? Okay, later I should... I should go and check it out. And in the meantime, okay, during uh end of this month, because I'm back in action, same just like I'm inviting Ethan right now. Okay, I'm, I'm back in action to do my own uh free masterclass as well. So if you are somebody looking to really looking to invest in a more safer and a more peaceful way, then you actually don't need to monitor the market every single day. This is what I don't do. I don't like to monitor the market and all this. So I prefer a more zen way of uh, investing and if this is something that you are looking for as well you don't uh, you want less volatility at the same time still have very consistent return in the long run then do join my upcoming uh, master class because during my master class I will share with you step by step how you can do that because that's what exactly what I'm doing as well right so I have my free master class upcoming during end of August and uh, it's a two hours free uh, session I'm going to share with you some of 
my own approach and the option strategy that I'm using as well to increase my own return. And you can see whether how you can apply it to your portfolio. And of course, at the end of this sharing, I will also share with you if you want to join my community, which is my own uh, group coaching community, this is what's going to happen as well, right? But regardless or not, right, you're definitely going to learn a lot and uh, yeah, have a lot of fun on that day, learning about different strategy as well as um, how you're going to invest better as well as an investor, right? So all you need to do is to scan this QR code and join my upcoming masterclass happening end of this month, right? So uh, for those who are, okay, let me see whether any questions, uh, property price too expensive. Okay, so Ethan, what's your take on uh, property price too expensive? Um, Singapore is a very, very sought after place. Uh, we have very good healthcare. We got good uh, politicians. We have a uh, best business environment, 15 years. Uh, airport, the best so far. Um, yeah. For shipping, we are second only to Shanghai. I think, yes, expensive, but worth it. <laughs> In my I opinion, yeah. I think so too, because like after I travel to so many different places also, like of course, when I went to China, I felt wow, I'm really impressed by the growth of the country, but right. you just cannot deny that there are so many people from China wanting to migrate to Singapore. And those people who are rich, they have in fact migrated, right? That's how they have been buying a lot of properties in Singapore as well. And that's why the government is regulating with a lot of cooling measures and whatnot, you know, additional tax for foreigners. So you know that this is a place where they always will have the heart for many people. And then the government will also do their best to try to control the property price, right? But at the end of the day, if it's so precious, eventually the property price will go up. So that's why I am personally investing in a Singapore property as well to diversify right. my risk and have a more balanced portfolio, right? So that's why if you are somebody who actually wants to have this property game right inside your portfolio, then you need to have a proper mortgage service as well, right? Consultation, then do uh, talk to Ethan uh, and, and he will be able to best advise you what to do next, okay? So mm -hmm. all you need to do is send this QR code and see whether other additional questions, PRC, <laughs> communist. <laughs> Kevin, what's the alternative? Rental? Rental, very expensive also. Mm. And yeah. the money don't go into principal. So do your calculations. Otherwise, check lah. Just uh put in put in and then I will reach out to you personally this time. Yep. All right. Awesome. So I think we are more or less uh down with answering all the questions. So once again, all right, I hope you guys learned a lot from this session. How many of you learned from this tonight's market update. And then of course, Eden's sharing on the property market, on the interest rate. If you learn, can you type me in the chat? All right, thank you so much, Odie. Thank you so much, Rick. All right, Winston, everybody for being here, supporting us. And then uh, even though the market is open, you guys are still here, excited to, to, to hear us wrapping up as well. So thank you everybody for being here. And once again, all right, I will look forward to seeing you guys during my next update. Uh, in fact, I will be doing more webinars as well, together with Ethan, together with including myself. I will be doing my masterclass during end of the month. So come and come and learn, come and have fun, and most importantly, becoming better, right? And learning to improve your financial situation together as well. Right. So thanks once again, everybody, and have a great, great night. And I will be uploading this recording to my YouTube channel as well so that you can revise if you need to all right so have a good night everybody see you guys thank you so much ethan i'm happy to be here see you see you bye